Hi there, my name is John Kirkby and together with Lizzie we had the privilege of founding Christians Against Poverty some 24 years ago. Over that time we've seen God do miracles with our ministry. It spread the length and breadth of the UK. We have over a thousand frontline workers, 600 centres. We help over 20,000 people a year. We're also in New Zealand, Australia, Canada and have recently launched in the States. I'm really, really grateful for this opportunity. Thank you Spring Harvest at Home for allowing me to bring hopefully some wisdom to you as you face the challenges and the crisis that COVID-19 is, particularly in how you manage your money. We are in unprecedented times. I know from my own family that you're likely to have lots of challenges around you. And of course, money is one of those things that will be in our lives, whether we're self-isolating or not. And how you handle money and the decisions that you make over the coming few weeks and perhaps months are really, really important. And my heart is that in this time I've got, that I'm going to be able to give you some wisdom, give you some encouragement and give you some practical things that you can do that will allow you to at least have your finances under control. Now, I know for many people, your finances have or are about to be significantly impacted. There are many people whose salaries have dropped by 20%. There are many self-employed people, business owners. You may be one of them where your income has literally completely stopped, where you do not know how much money you're going to have coming in from day to day and week to week. Maybe you're amongst the millions of people who've had to go on universal credit. Maybe you've had to apply for government support and help for yourself and for your employees. Wherever you are, I believe that these simple, simple steps can help you and help your family. And I do believe that with God and with his hope and with some wisdom, that we can at least get you into a position where you know where you are. And knowing where you are is really, really critical in your finances. So if things have changed, and in fact, if things haven't changed, this is a really, really important first step, and that is to build yourself a budget. Really easy. You can do it with a piece of paper and a calculator. You can open a spreadsheet. You can go and download the numerous apps that are available that help you build a, bud build a budget. And you need to do that, and you need to do it together. Um, if you're not on your own, if you have a partner, wife, husband, please... Please sit down together and do a budget. Write down what your income is. Write down what your expenses. Go through your bank statement. Tick off all your direct debits. Add it up. Put it in one place and find out where you are financially. We've had to do this, myself and Lizzie. Lizzie's salary has dropped by 20%. We've just had to, had to look at what we are paying out and what we have got coming in. And I would suggest, really important that you do that. The next thing, once you've done a budget, is really, really important. Listen, whatever it says, whatever you're facing, the number one rule I would say to you is do not panic. When we're panicked and we're stressful, which is understandable, we make decisions that are not based on reflection. And if ever you needed a time when you want to make good decisions, it is right now. So please don't panic. Stop. Pray. Just have some time. Just take a break allow what you found out to just register with you and i would say to you that there is hope don't panic there will be a way forward and at this time with what the government have done and how things have changed i think there are some options that perhaps have never been available that hopefully will give you some hope as you navigate these forthcoming weeks and months so once you've done a budget once you've put the money on one side for food and for your basic necessities, gas, electric, water, you will find out whether or not you've got enough money to pay things like your mortgage or your rent. Now, this advice I would never have given apart from this situation that we're in. The government, banks and building societies have acknowledged that it is likely that millions of people will be so affected by this situation that they will actually be unable to make their full mortgage or their full rent repayment. Building societies and banks have accepted that for a certain period of time some people may not even be able to pay any of their mortgage and certainly people will only be able to pay a certain percentage of their mortgage. There will be an openness for you to contact your building society and let them know your situation and ask them if they will work with you and they really must work with you. If you cannot afford to pay your mortgage or your rent for a short period of time, 
for once only, I think this is a time when you may have to take advantage of what the government have said the banks and building societies can do. If it's your landlord and perhaps they're not as understanding as you would have expected, the first thing is do pay what you can. I think it's important to be honourable in our finances as we pay for our homes. But the truth is the banks have given landlords the option for them also not to pay some of their mortgage payments. So they should understand that for a season you might not be able to pay your full rent. I'm sure they will work with you and as a backstop all collection activity has been stopped. So no one is repossessing any homes, no one is going to court to get people evicted. That has been a decision that's been made. So there is going to be some breathing space for you. Of course, the less you pay now, perhaps the more eventually you'll be able to pay, but hopefully that will be able to be done in an orderly fashion by making extra payments for several months or perhaps even several years. So that is an option. The second thing that I would ask you to do is please, if you are out of work or if you are struggling, please take advantage of everything that is on offer for you. If you need to claim universal credit, if you need to claim housing benefit, please claim. Please spend time getting your applications. Go online. Make sure that you make a good application for help because if help is there, make sure you get your help. If you're an employer, you know you can apply for grants. If you're self-employed, there are loan facilities. There are things you can do. So I would say do anything and everything that is available to you to maximize your income at this stage and make sure you do everything to balance your budget. So what happens if you've done all that and you're still struggling? Well, one of the great things that I've seen over the last few weeks uh, is churches. I've seen local churches begin to make a massive difference in people's lives. I'm pretty certain that your home church will have considered giving extra help. There will be people in your community who will be willing to help you. And I would say, please, please be open to receive that help. Please give people, give friends, give family the opportunity of looking after you and supporting you through this time. If you are in need, I pray that you'd have the confidence. There's nothing to be embarrassed about to let your church know, to let friends know. Give people an opportunity to help you at this time. It's really important. I know me and Lizzie have have said that we're willing to help some of our friends if they need it and we would be really blessed to do that but people will have to let us know if they have any needs so please let your church know if you have needs. We are seeing local communities really help people and it's important that you let people know. If you're self-isolating and you need help let people know. Please speak up and let us know that you need help. People will respond the generosity and compassion that we've seen overflowing in the church in the UK is amazing. So don't panic, build a budget. And I would think the next thing that I would ask you to do is to really, really bring God into your financial and into your home situation. There has never been a greater need for us all to seek God. We need so much wisdom. We need so much help. We need his intervention. We need his miraculous provision. We need God more than I think for many of us than we perhaps have ever needed. So my advice to you is don't panic, is build a budget, is bring your request to God. I would say pray deeper. Spend time in the morning. Ask God for his wisdom. Ask for his provision. Tell him your problems, tell him what you need. Bring him into the very heart of your finances and into the very heart of your family. God is here for us, he's here for us right now. He's with us and for us and wants to walk with us, but we need to find that space, to pray, to get in his word and to allow his spirit to reassure us that there is hope and there is a future for all of us. I also want to talk a little bit about what you might do with regard to savings and also if you're like most people have a pension or have investments you may have already noticed that those investments and those pensions have been significantly affected by the volatility on the stock markets around the world as the markets respond to this huge economic stress and crash that is happening around us and in our businesses. Listen, the most important thing is don't panic. 
if you do have a pension, if you have investments, it's important that you, if you haven't already, speak to your financial advisors. Don't make any rash decisions at this time. It's really important that you seek professional advice about your investments and about your pensions. And if you don't need those investments and you don't need that pension now, then there is time for things to turn around. And again, I would say don't panic. These things do pass. Things will come through. Things will turn around. But it's really important that you seek professional advice from either your financial advisor or an independent financial advisor to give you some wisdom as to what you should do with your investments and how you should respond to the challenges that you're finding. And the final thing is a little bit about savings. Um, I know that many of you will have saved and you'll have been saving up for things. I think that this is a time when we should look to release our savings. If you have a shortfall in your finances, if you have needs within your family, if you have needs within your church and within your friends, my heart would be that you would do what me and Lizzie have done, which is basically decide that we are not gonna hold on to our savings if our savings are needed for us and our family, but also if there are other needs in our community. We've determined that in this season, we are gonna live generous. We are going to live generous. We're not going to hold and hoard what we have for ourselves, be that food, be that all sorts, but neither are we going to hoard finances. We're going to be open-handed. We're going to be open-handed to people in our world who need help. We're going to be open-handed to make sure the poor and needy in our communities are helped. So please, please, I would ask you to remain generous despite the uncertainty and despite the challenges that you may find in your own life. And finally, I would like to lead us through a brief study of this verse, these verses that have held me and Lizzie for many years. Um, I'm a great journalist, so I literally um, write down dates and events and track it um, through my Bible. And this is one of six what we would call life application scriptures that me and Lizzie have endeavoured to live our life by and these promises in these verses are for you and for me they're for us they're for our families and the wisdom here I really believe is important that we bring this into our finances and we bring this into our lives as we look at what God could do with us and through us at this time let me read these verses to you it's in Philippians chapter 4 and it starts at verse 4 it says this Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, shall guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. There's so much in those few verses. Me and Lizzie have determined that whilst we have got some challenges, I'll be honest with you, I have woken up on more than one occasion with a, a real sense of anxiety. Uh, what, will happen, what will happen in the charity that we poured our life into? What's happening to the tens of thousands of poor and needy in our nation whose lives are devastated? I've got two of my five children, two girls that are on the front line with the NHS, a midwife, and a student nurse who's volunteered to go on the front line. Um, I've seen challenges, I can't see my grandkids. We're facing some problems, things are not what I would want them to be. We have got, in some ways, an uncertain future. But listen, we've determined that we are gonna approach this from a place of gratefulness. We're gonna approach all our needs from a sense of what we have got and not what we haven't got. We're gonna rejoice in the things that are really important, i.e. we know Jesus Christ, he is with us and for us. We are connected to our family. We have got food in the fridge. We have a home that is secure. We are in the midst of this crisis blessed and we are gonna live grateful. We're gonna live praising God and rejoicing for what we have got whilst presenting our needs to him of what we'd like him to help us with. So, present our requests with thanksgiving. Let's approach everything with a sense of gratitude of what we have got, not what we haven't got. And the verses go on to help you with how you might do that. It says this, it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, 
wherever is lovely, wherever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learnt or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Get a piece of paper out, start journaling, write down the things that are true, the things that are noble, the things that are right, the things that are pure. Focus our minds and think on the goodness and the opportunity that I'm sure God is giving each and every one of us in this time. By living grateful and thinking about what we have got, me and Lizzie have not only um, helping through the CAP community across the UK and around the world, but also we decided and determined we'd reach out into our local community. We set up a, a program, we've got three rows of terrace houses where we live, and we've set up a little community to help people. And it's been astonishing to see just how amazing it's been. We just put notes through people's doors with our details and phone number, saying if you need help, let us know. And if you're willing to help, let us know. And we've built this wonderful community. We're also looking after 67 sheltered housing across the road from where we live. People making sure that people isolated have got food, making sure we're connected and looking after each other. There really is an opportunity for us to be salt and light into our communities, to show our communities that we have got a hope, that we are able to help other people. And I would really recommend that you look to helping the needs of others. It really makes you realise just what you have got. Volunteering at a local food bank, getting involved to help people. You will see just what you already have got. And knowing that will bring you, as it says here, it will bring you the peace. It says, and the God of peace will be with you. So live grateful. Let's live for others. And this final verses really do sum up what we want to live by and how we want to be. It says this, For I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every circumstance and situation. Whether well fed, whether living in plenty or living in one, I can do everything through him who strengthens me. Listen. You can do everything through him who strengthens you. You can get through this. You can lead your family through this. You can bring peace to your community. You can stand proud with others, serving the poor, loving God. You can pray deeper. You can get through this. This is, I believe, one of those moments, perhaps the biggest in all our lives, when we need to stand up to the plate, we have to show a hurting world that we will love deeper, that we will care greater for people, that we will show people that we have a hope that is beyond what is around us, that whatever happens, whatever difficulties we face, we are going to stay close to God. We're going to bring him into the very heart of our lives, whether that's our finances, our relationships, our homes, our community, our church, that we would live generous, that we would be outward thinking, helping others living grateful for what God has got and allowing his spirit to use us, to comfort us when we need it, to help us when we're anxious, to bring his hope into our lives and those around us. And my prayer for you, for your family, for me and for my family is that we would just know God more. So let me close by praying for us, for you, for your family, your church and your community. Please, let's bow our heads and join with me as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we lift those around us who are less fortunate than us. We ask, Lord, that we would love greater, that we would have a compassion for those who are in our communities in need, that you would give us the confidence to reach out to help, to be there for people who need us. Father, we pray for our families. We pray that you would be with us whatever is coming down the track that you would give us the strength to hold secure in difficult times the resilience to be able to cope the wisdom to make good decisions a heart to bring you into the very core of who we are our families and our communities father we pray for everybody and anybody who is in need right now we pray for those who are anxious for those who have lost income, for those who don't know what to do, we pray for them right now. We ask that your wisdom would be there for them, that you would help 
others to provide for their needs, that together as communities we can hold each other close, we can hold each other in loving arms and be compassionate and care. Father, we pray for each of us that a sense of generosity would well up within us, that we would think of others and that we would walk closely with you. We ask for your spirit, we ask for your grace and we ask for your provision for whatever any of us need right now or will need in the coming weeks and months. And we thank you. We praise you that we've got a loving saviour who cares and is with us and will never forsake us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope that helps. I hope that you've, yeah, that's reassured you and given you some things to do. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And let's see what God can do with us through this crisis. And it will pass. We will get there. And at the end of it, let's be able to say we brought God into the very heart of our own journey with this coronavirus. Thank you.